بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتمم بالخير الدرس الثانية والعشرون Lesson number 22 In this lesson we are going to learn about five new ideas The first one is Bab Infa'ala which is form number seven Number two, Lawla, had it not been, and as we, we know that Lawla is basically Adatu Shart, it is a harp or particle of condition. And then we are going to learn about Wuqu'us Mil Isharati Na'atin. That Ismul uh, Ishara, as we know, normally we know that it is used as, as Mubtada and it is used in the beginning. However, here we are going to learn that Ismul Ishara can also be used as an adjective. So we say وَقُوعُ اسْمِ الْإِشَارَةِ نَعْتَن That Ismul Ishara is used as an adjective. Then التَّغْلِيبُ which is predominance and the last one is إِضَافَةُ الْجُمْلَةِ إِلَى الظَّرْفِ That the whole sentence is used as مُضَافِ إِلَيْهِ now we have seen that, uh, we have learned that a word can be used as mudaf mudaf, mudaf ilayh. For example, we say, inda plus Allah, so it will be in the Allah. Uh, that is just uh, two words. But now we will see that uh, that the whole sentence can be used as mudaf ilayh. And inshallah, when we proceed further, we will also learn that uh, the whole sentence can be marfur or it can be mansub or majroor. And that's like where we are progressing now. So from word and from incomplete constructions, now we are moving on to the complete sentence uh, being used as mudaf ilayh. لنبدأ على بركة الله المدرس, the teacher هاتو الدفاترة يا إخوانو So why الدفاترة is mansub over here? Because هاتو is ismul fail, So it's ismul fail, I should say. Uh, so it's basically uh, used as a command and we know that whenever there is a command there is a hidden doer inside it. So it's basically we can say combination of fail plus file and at the fatira is maful bihi. That's why it is mansub. So as we have in the Quran, Hatu burha nakum in kuntum sadiqeen. So hatu burha nakum. So it's the same expression used over here. Hatu ad-dafatira, ya ikhwanu, bring your notebooks or brothers. At-tullabu, the students, yusallimuna ad-dafatira, and they submit their notebooks. Sallama, yusallimu tasliman, means to hand over or to submit. So bring your notebooks or brothers, the students submit their home notebooks. Al-Hasanu, ana lam aktub. Al-wajibat ya ustadu. So, an lam aktub, as we know that lam, when it comes with the mudari, the mudari becomes majzum and it becomes past. And we know that after sakin, we have al. So, when we connect it, we will connect it with kasra. Lam aktubil wajibat. Okay, what will be the ending of wajibat? Uh, aktub is fail plus file, so it is maful bihi. And Atun, atin, atin, as we know that this is the sound feminine plural. So whenever we have sound feminine plural, it will be, marfu will be atun, and mansub and majroor will be atin, atin. And when we have al with that, it will be al muslimatu, al muslimati, al muslimati. And we know that this is mansub, so that's why it will take kasra over here. So it is not majroor, it is mansub bil kasra. Ya ustadu, or teacher. So, Hassan says, I didn't write my homework, O oh, teacher. Al-Madarisu Lima. Why not? So, we know that here, uh, there is Ha over here and it is called Ha Usakt. And it is used when you stop at the end of a word or the verse of the Quran that ends with the Marbuta. So, please remember that after Lima, we cannot or there is no further information or nothing after that. It is only used 
by itself and there will be nothing after that so it is called how sakt why not al hasanu in kasarat nazarati my reading glasses or my spectacles broke fala astati'u and i am not able to an aqra'a as we know that after an uh, the verb becomes mansub and it takes fatha an aqra'a aw aktuba or uh, to write and we know that aw is used when we have a choice between two two things when we use uh, am am always comes with istifham am as we know that am is a combination of a which is hamzatul istifham and then after that we have am so they come together a and am together am lam tundirhum la yu'minun so as we can see over here uh, so we can see over here that a and am always come together and if we don't have a then we have to use aw for the choice so, so when we have choice between two things then we don't have to use am we have to use aw however if we have hamzatul istifham then we have to use the combination of a and am nadharati as we know that nadharatun is feminine so that's why the verb that is used is also for the feminine and we know that this is ya al mutakallim which is used as uh, to say mine so nadharati my glasses is mudah mudafilah and it will be basically the subject and inkasarat is the verb so the translation inkasara yankasiru inkasaran is basically to break by itself uh, my eyeglasses or my spectacles broke so i am not able to read or write al mudarrisu udruka maqbulun another very beautiful expression your excuse is accepted now maqbulun as we know that it is on the pattern of maf'ulun and that means passive so now we should see what is the difference between inkasara or inkasarat because we know that it gives the passive meaning and maqbulun is also passive so what is the difference okay this is maqbulun this is passive in construction so qabila yaqbalu fa huwa qabilun qabila yuqbalu fa fadaka maqbulun so this is maf'ul this is the this is basically the construction and the constructions gives the passive meaning however here it is passive in meaning and not in construction so i hope it's clear now that when it is this is here it is passive in the meaning whereas this is passive in construction so both of them give the passive meaning udruka is mudaf mudaf alayh plus it is mubtada and maqbulun is khabar very easy sentence your excuse is accepted so when you look at the translation you can see that this is passive construction your excuse is ex- accepted wa aina daftaruka ya muawiyatu and where is your daftar o muawiya where is your notebook o muawiya muawiyatu ana aydan lam aktub muawiya says i also didn't write okay al mudarrisu ankasarat nadharatuka aydan a very delicate point over here now we know that hamza of uh, form number 7 is hamzatul wasl so why do we have here hamza that is hamzatul qati what happened over here it shouldn't be there right so what happened over here first of all let's look at the construction ankasarat nadharatuka mudaf mudaf alay and this is the verb and this is the file aydan also so look at the translation now did your eye glasses also break now where do we get did from where does it come from and how does it become a question okay let's have a look at this basically it was in kasarat as we know and we know that this hamza is hamzatul wasl and when we connect it it is not pronounced before this we have hamzatul istifham which is used to ask a question now what happens we have seen in the beginning of the lesson that whenever we have a letter before hamzatul wasl then it becomes sakin and it is not pronounced so this is hamzatul istifham which is used to ask a question so when it comes before uh, hamzatul wasl then it becomes sakin so that's why it becomes ankasarat so basically the idea is 
in kasarat nazaratu ka aidan did your eyeglass also break but because of you know uh, phonetic reasons it's not possible to pronounce hamzat al wasl so that's why it is dropped completely and it becomes an kasarat nazaratu ka aidan did your eyeglasses also break and then this expression is used in the quran as well however it's not used for form number 7 when inshallah we start form number 8 we will have at some of we will have a look at some of the examples from the quran muawiyah to why why do we not say muawiyatun because it is mamnu min as-sarf so that's why it will be muawiyah to why because it is ta marbuta and it is a proper name so whenever we have a proper name plus ta marbuta it will be mamnu min as-sarf la no in qata'at al-kahraba the power was cut out and now we can see over here that al kahraba electricity in arabic is is feminine that's why the verb that we have is in qata'at fi mahja'ina in our hostel ba'ida this is the short form of ba'idun so ba'id and this is ismul musaghar ba'ida that's little after uh, salat al maghribi after maghrib prayer wastamarra so here again hamza is hamza al wasl so we will don't pronounce it wastamarra al inqita'u and the cut out continued ila muntasaf al layli to the midnight now here if i ask you is it from number 7 the one that we are discussing now and the answer is no why because after noon we have ta so when we after noon we have ta that means that this is from number 8 which we will discuss inshallah in the coming lesson so this is from number 8 in the safa yan tasifu intisalan so uh, it will be form number 8 so in qata yan qati in qitan as we know and then for the feminine it will be in qataat so the electricity cut out in our hostel a little after maghrib prayer and cut out continued till midnight so let's uh, also have a look at over here that al in qata is is masdar cut out and uh, in qataat is the verb and we when we look at the english translation here cut out is is with a space so it is used just like some information in english uh, when there is a space it is a verb and when it is without the space it is a noun and we know that masdar is a noun and that's why it is translated as cut out without space yanfath yanfathu al babu the door opens وَيَدْخُلُ عَدْنَانُ and Adnan enters now who opened the door no one opened the door the door opened by itself in fataha yanfatihu in fitahan something that opens by itself and we know that from number 7 the characteristic is that it gives the passive meaning and it tells us about something that happened by itself for example we say kasara as we say kasara az zujaju the glass uh, he broke the glass kasara az zujaja and when we say in kasara az zujaju it means that the the glass broke by itself the door opens and uh, the nan enters and we know why it is translated as the door opens because this is the present and for the present we have to use the present form so the door opens and the nan enters yadkhulu also dakhala yadkhulu this is the present tense lima ta'akhkharta ya adnanu why did you come late o oh, adnan ta'akhkhara can you figure out which for, verb form is this okay we have ta and we have tashdeed and we know that the combination of ta and tashdeed gives us from number 5 exactly lima why ta'akhkharta ya adnanu why did you come late o oh, adnan adnanu adnan says in qalabat siyaratun a car capsized or turned over so we know that siyaratun means a car fi tariqi on the road fatawaqqafa al mururu and the traffic stopped now we have seen that tawaqqaf is from number 6 and sometimes it gives the passive meaning when we talk about waqqafa yuqifu tawqifan means to stop someone waqqafani fatawaqqaftu he stopped me and then i stopped so waqqafa from number 4 is to stop so 5 uh, 2 is to stop someone but from number 6 is to stop by itself fatawaqqaf al maruru and the traffic stopped how did it stop by itself a car turned upside down or capsized on the road and the 
traffic stopped an qalabat sayyaratun aina where now can you figure out this pattern over here now how to figure it out look at the question mark what does question mark say it says that this is a question how do we know that this is a question because we have hamza over here and this hamza tells us that this is basically a question did a car turn upside down uh, where uh, so now we can see over here that this is a question uh, let's have a look how it happened we we saw this before and we see it again in qalabat is is basically used for the singular feminine and then uh, when we have hamzatul istifham before this then this hamza will not be pronounced so it becomes an qalabat sayyaratun did a car turn upside down aina where adnanu fil munatafi alladhi in the curve which is ba'd al jisri after the bridge now we know that munataf is on the pattern of ismul maf'ul however we know that this form does not have ismul maf'ul so it will be used as a dharf dharf so what kind of dharf is this this is a dharf makan adverb of place because it tells us about uh, about what it tells us about the curve okay in atafa yan atifu in atafan uh, is to be uh, to, to turn right or left so also this is when it is the master it is called curve in the curve that is after uh, or when it is dharf basically after the bridge that is after the bridge asalima rukabu salima yaslamu very beautiful verb in the arabic language anything that has the root letter of salima uh, it gives the meaning of peace salima yaslamu and similarly we have aslama yuslimu islaman wa salamatan wa sallamun all of them the verbs that are used in the quran that have or salimun uh, that have the salam meme root letters it always gives the meaning of peace were the passengers safe adnanu na'am salimu yes they were safe alhamdulillah and praise walhamdulillah and praise be to allah Lawla fadlullahi alayhim lamatu. Again, we have a very beautiful expression over here. Lawla fadlullahi alayhim lamatu. So first, let, let's have a look at the translation. Had it not been for the grace of Allah upon them, they could have died. So now we can see over here that this is a conditional sentence. We learned about conditional sentence in lesson number 12. What was that? That was the use of law we learned in lesson number 12. Law, so now we learned that both law and lawla are particles of condition. Yani they are uh, harafani or harafa al uh, asharti. These are the letters of or the particles of condition. Okay, so first we learned about law. Law harfu imtina'in limtina'in is the par particle of impossibility for impossibility. لولا حرف امتناع لوجود particle of impossibility for the presence of something so look at the difference what's the difference over here حرف امتناع حرف امتناع so both of them are particles of impossibility but here this is particle of impossibility for impossibility however this is particle of impossibility for the presence of something so this is the main difference that we have to figure out in the coming part of the lesson okay low just a revision low we need to know that after this is the particle of condition so the first part is the condition and we know that this is shart and this is jawab shart how many things do we need, need to know about low number one it is particle of condition number two jawab shart is always past tense as we can see here Najahta is a past tense. Number three, if it is a sentence that is positive, we can say, uh, or it is like uh, it's not negative. So what happens after that? Then it takes imperative la with that. So jawabishat is past, and if it is not negative, then it takes la after that. Let's have a look at that. So la wijta had la la najahta had you studied hard you could have passed the exam what happens over here why it is called a particle of impossibility for impossibility because there are two conditions and both of them have not been met 
what happened la wajtahta la najahta now you didn't work hard and you did not succeed so both of the conditions are not met so that's why it is called particle of impossibility for impossibility because you didn't do this you didn't get this if we have after law if we have a negative sentence if we have ma after that then what happens then when we use ma then we don't use la over there so there's that's the basic difference because it is a negative sin um, negative sentence ma rasabta so that's why when we have ma then we don't have la and when we have la we don't have ma lavij and we know that it is sakin wow is sakin and when we connect it we connect it with kasra lavij tahta ma rasabta had you studied hard you wouldn't have failed uh, or you wouldn't have failed the exam so now uh, the, the 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 thing is the same that the person didn't work hard and he didn't succeed now we focus on laula laula is also particle of condition that's number 1 so whenever we have jawab shart similar to law jawab shart is always past tense and Uh, if it is not negative uh, then it takes the lam with that however now the things that we have to see over here is that that after laula what happens and and please remember that laula is one word it's not two words it's laula is one word only and it's a one particle i should say so now what happens something okay so first thing we need to see that the past tense and then the past tense takes la with that if it's not negative okay number 2 Now what do we see over here? Fadlullah, something is present over here. You remember, harfu imtinain li wujudin. So something has to be present over there. So what is present over there? Fadlullah. So because Fadlullah is present over there, that's why they didn't die. So that's why it is called harfu imtinain li wujudin. That because something existed, that's why the other thing did not happen. So had it not been for the grace of Allah upon them. they could have died why didn't they die because they had mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one more thing we need to know that after laula we always have mubtada uh, so fadlullah will be mubtada and we know that jar majroor cannot be mubtada and uh, we know that whenever there is a mubtada there has to be a khabar and here khabar is always mahdhuf it is always omitted taqdiruhu mawjudun so basically the sentence is laula fadlullahi alayhim mawjudun lamatu but we know that khabar has to be mahdhuf and as we know that arabic is a lughatul hifz there are lots of uh, things that are being omitted and it is one of them as well so uh, again just a, a brief um, explanation that after laula uh, we have to have something that is present and that has to be mubtada khabar has to be mahdhuf and if uh, jawab shart is 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 positive then it has to take la with that however if jawab shart is negative then we know that we have to use ma with that and now the condition has changed what is the condition laula fadlullah alayhim had it not been for the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma naju they wouldn't have survived so idea is the same they survived why did they survive because they had uh, mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i hope it's clear now kana al inqilab anifan the capsizing or the turn over was severe faqad khala'at faqad and we know that this is sakin and when we connect it we connect it with kasra faqad khala'at al abwab and the doors were dislodged but the kasar az zujaju and the glass broke into pieces again from number 5 uh, giving us the meaning of passive uh, as we we have seen that this is mutawa uh, mutawaatun of from number 2 so from number 2 you make someone do something but from number 5 sometimes it is passive it gives the meaning that something happened and it it happened by itself so in khala yan khali'u in khila'an is to be dislodged so if you look at the translation the turn over or capsizing was violent or severe the doors were dislodged as we can see over here and why do we have it khalat and the feminine verb because al abwabu is the plural of babun babun is uh, singular and it is masculine but when we use the plural of babun abwabun uh, 
and then it is treated as singular feminine such a beautiful expression of arabic language so babun when singular it is plural but when we talk about singular is is masculine but when we talk about the plural then the plural becomes feminine masjidun is masculine but when we say masajidu it is feminine so that's why we have this feminine verb in khalaatil abwabu وَتَكَسَّرَ الزُّجَاجُ Because zujaj is feminine, that's why the verb that we have is for the fem- is masculine. That's why the verb that we have is also masculine. If it is feminine, we know that there has to be ta as which is called ta at tanith after that. However, this is masculine, that's why there is no need for this. And the glass is broke to pieces. اِقْرَى And then we know that it's sakin and then when we connect it, it will be اِقْرَى الدرسة يا تلحتو read the lesson أو تلح تلحتو إن كسفت الشمس and here we have our point number two where we will see that the whole sentence is used as مضاف إليه إن كسفت الشمس the sun was eclipsed يوم the day مات إبراهيم إبراهيم رضي الله عنه passed away why I say رضي الله عنه because it refers to the son of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so yawma we can see that it is dharf plus it is mudaf and mata ibrahimu is jumla wa mudaf ilayh as I told you in the beginning of the sentence that now we will see that the complete sentence is used as mudaf ilayh how it is a complete sentence mata is fail and ibrahimu is file the combination of fail plus file makes a complete sentence in kasafat is shamsu the sun was eclipsed. Yawma mat Ibrahim the day Ibrahim radiallahu anhu passed away. Fakal nasu and the people said, In kasafat it was eclipsed. Limauti Ibrahim or yeah, Limauti Ibrahim because of the death of Ibrahim al Islam. Because maut is noun, it is mudaf and Ibrahim is mudaf alayh. And it is mamnu min sarf. We will see in the end of the lesson why it is mamnu min sarf. Fakala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the shamsa indeed the sun wal qamara and the moon ayatani are two signs min ayatillahi from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yankasifani they are not eclipsed li mawti this is lam this is lam as we know harf jar so li mawti ahadin for the death of anyone Wala lihayatihi and not for the birth of anyone. So, um, yeah, the people said it eclipsed due to the death of Ibrahim alayhi salam, but uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, no, indeed, the sun and the moon are two signs. They are not eclipsed for the sake of someone's death or birth, as we can see over here. Now we will see uh, over here, inshallah, when we proceed further. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُمَا Huma refers to shams wal qamar, both of them. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ هُمَا When you see both of them, فَدْعُ اللَّهَ Then call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was اُدْعُ اللَّهَ And because of fa before it, it becomes فَدْعُ اللَّهَ Then call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فِرَ الْأَمْرِ وَسَلُّوا And pray. سَلَّا يُسَلِّي تَسْلِيَةً سَلَّا And the plural will be سَلُّوا And pray. Hatta and now we can see over here that hatta is uh, also it is used it's a preposition but also it is used as harfu uh, masdar and uh, the verb that comes after that becomes mansub over here taqdiruhu hatta an yanjaliya so basically an is mahdhuf over here so that's why we know that after an the, the verb becomes mansub and here it is also mansub hatta yanjaliya until they become clear yani until the uh, eclipse is removed now we can see over here yanjaliya uh, we have a hidden dhameer inside it dhameerun mustamirun and taqdiruhu huwa hatta yanjaliya uh, until it is uh, clear and what that dhameer the hidden dhameer refers to what it refers to the eclipse al kusuf it refers to the Eclipse, and the translation is over there. We have uh, we have seen this uh, 
uh, and we have discussed this about this so we can see now if you and if you see the sun and the moon being eclipsed then call upon allah and pray until the eclipse is over now we will have a look at at taghlib what is at taghlib ghalaba yaghlibu is to dominate ghalaba yughalibu from number 2 taghliban as we can see at taghlib is to make someone dominate what does that mean at taghlibu is using masculine form uh, to refer to a group containing both masculine and feminine nouns or verbs it depends so the audience is mixed we have men and women boys and girls the uslub of arabic language is that we have to use the feminine the masculine form we have to use what the masculine form now is this like masculine is being given priority of course not as allah says in the quran inna akramakum inda allah atqakum in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the most respectable is the one who is most God-fearing. So it is only for the sake of Arabic language. It is the uslub. So what is the uslub? The audience, if we have 99 women and if we have one man, uh, so again, still it will be the noun that will be used is for the masculine, not for the feminine. As we have lots of examples in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, as we know that alladheena is used for masculine and allati or allai is used for feminine. So it's not in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena wa allai wa allati. In the Quran we have Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, uh, which refers to both masculine and feminine. And there are many examples of this in the Quran. And here uh, we can see over here that in the shamsa wal qamra ayatani, we know that shams is feminine and Qamar is masculine, uh, but the verb that we have over here is used for the masculine. Yan kasifu, yan kasifani. Uh, and and that, that's what I have explained in detail that uh, whenever we have two, uh, there is a combination of the, the audience is mixed. When we have masculine and feminine gender, and then the noun or the verb that is used in Arabic language is for masculine and not for feminine. Intaha ad al yawma Our lesson for today is completed And inshallah when we come back again We will continue with the rest of the lesson Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh